Hi guys, this is Philip from Reamped, and as promised, today we have some more cyberpunk content for you, namely the DR12 Quasar Tech Revolver. Enjoy! While playing Cyberpunk, there was one gun that kind of caught my eye very quickly, and that was the DR12 Quasar. It seemed a bit strange, but I really like the asymmetrical design, as well as the crazy skin and paint job. For modeling the gun, I found some concept images, and also looked at it closely in the game with the photo mode. The most important part then was to break down the entire model into pieces that were easy to model. With the exception of the rear of the gun and the lower connection between grip and magazine, the parts can be reduced to simple shapes of boxes, cylinders and splines. In general, this is a good approach if you want to remodel an object. Try to break it down to simple shapes and then go into detail from there. For the grip and the bridge to the magazine, I used a basic box with several subdivisions and adjusted the vertices to roughly match the grip's shape and then chamfer the edges a little. Using the TurboSmooth modifier, I got a quite good result. Like for the thermal katana, I used splines in some cases to recreate parts that were a bit more complicated, but still can be broken down to a two-dimensional shape. The magazine is quickly modeled by using a cylinder with an offset top polygon and rounded edges. Since there are also some indents all around the magazine, I used a simple array tool in 3ds Max to distribute some boxes evenly. And then I just quickly subtracted the indents using boolean operations. Looking closely at the game, I also noticed the indents on the side, top and rear of the gun. Therefore, I recreated the company logo and name by drawing the characters with splines and extruding these when finished. For the term Polytechnic, I used a font that closely matched the style as seen in the game. I know it's not perfect, but it works for me. Once everything was done, I used boolean operations to unify or, in the case of the fonts, subtract parts and finish off the model. As for printing, I decided to print everything in parts with my SLA printer. Usually, I would reconsider since the cost of the resin is quite high. But in this case, it gave me several advantages. First, I found a really cheap resin that worked like a charm. Second, the model comes out with a really fine resolution. And third, sending the resin is really easy compared to FDM prints. Basically, all I needed to do was to send away the support structure leftovers and then fine sand everything with a sanding sponge. It took like 20 minutes in total to finish all the sanding, compared to the hours of sanding I sometimes have to do for FDM prints. And for certain areas where there were some minor print errors, I used the glue to fill them. But those were really just some small holes, so it did not need too much attention. Once that was done, I painted each part separately, which was a challenge in by itself. Mainly because I had to get the right spray paints. I had a printout of the gun to check back with the color scheme and luckily got all of the paints locally and did not have to order something separately online. With the paint job finished and everything dried properly, it was finally time to assemble everything. This was a basic task, since there are no mechanics or anything working to that model. So it was just gluing everything together, nothing more. And then something happened. I glued the safety switch on the wrong way around. Yeah, that wouldn't come off without breaking something. But once I had that, I could finally go back to the fun part. Painting and weathering. First off, I filled the indents of the logo and the text with the respective paints and washed away any color that would flow over the indents onto the main surface. I also added some stickers that I recreated in Illustrator and printed with my laser printer for the final touch. Then I used some rub and buff on some metallic parts and oil paint on others. I applied the rub and buff with some q-tips. 
but I always took care not to get too much of it on the gun, since that could easily look too artificial. For the oil paint, I used a rough brush and then took off most of it with a paper towel to make it look a bit used. But for this one, I did not want to exaggerate the weathering. It should look like a well cared for gun, with only hints of usage. And I actually think, even though it was finished so fast, it's one of my favorite pieces so far. In total it took me around 5-6 to six hours, excluding the print time and drying time for the paint, to finish this entire prop. Yes, exactly. And if you use the coupon code, you will get an instant 3% discount. So don't hesitate. Call now! Well again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this piece came into life. For now, I won't upload the 3D files, however, because it is still a work in progress. As of now, the revolver doesn't have any functionality. That's something I still want to change though. In the future, I hope to add the trigger action as well as removing and inserting the magazine. And while I'm at it, maybe I model a few bullets to go with it. As soon as it's finished, I will upload it for you to download and make your own again. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, then click the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to stay up to date, then also hit the notification bell to see more content from us. Until next time, bye!